Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson again. We're back with Human Relations, Motivation, Increasing Productivity in Chapter 5. Right? Everyone needs to be uh, motivated to some certain extent, whether it be an employee, associate, manager, upper management, need to be motivated by something, whether that comes internally or externally being motivated by someone else. You need motivation or some type of push or reason to do your job. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be doing it. Someone works at a manufacturing plant, they don't just go there as a hobby. They go there because uh, they receive a paycheck and they, uh, in turn, give them a paycheck to make a living. So as always, we start with our learning objectives. Uh, define motivation, uh, which is uh, easily and not so easily defined. Uh, explain need-based theories of motivation. Explain behavior-based theories of motivation. Describe reinforcement theory and behavior modification. Kind of show you guys uh, how people can be uh, trained. Uh, also, some of that comes from you know psychology uh, uh, studies such as Pavlov and how dogs can be trained to say, oh, when you hear a bell, that means it's time for dinner. Uh, or if you run into an electric fence and uh, 15 times in a row, then the 16th time, even if the fence is not charged, then you're still not going to run into the fence because you've learned your lesson by now. Uh, discuss the relationship between self-esteem and motivation. Uh, we keep talking about self-esteem, and we will throughout the entire book, throughout the entire course. A motivation is the force of the need or desire to act. So it's a force, right? So you have a need, you have a desire to, to act in a certain way. Uh, the organizational climate uh, emotional weather within the organization. So not that it's snowing or raining inside the organization, but uh, if you look at it uh, from a metaphorical standpoint, you know maybe it is, or maybe it's sunshine in the organization. Things are great. It reflects the norms and attitudes of its culture, uh, affects worker morale, attitudes, stress level, and communication. So those are very important. Morale uh, are the are the people up? Are they happy? Or are they down and they think they're going to get fired and let go? Uh, do they have good attitudes? Do they have poor attitudes? Are they very, very stressed? Are they somewhat stressed? Are they at a good stress level which allows them to perform well? And uh, communication. Uh, communication is always the key. Communicate early and often. Uh, most uh, troubles in the workplace can be routed back to communication. Uh, so morale, as we stated, overall mood of an individual or group, right? So my morale or the morale of the group based on attitudes and satisfaction. And what do they satisfa satisfy with or not satisfy with? That would be their job. Uh, organization climate, when effective, it allows people to work to their full potential without becoming, becoming a threat to others, right? So working to your full potential, getting your job done without becoming a threat to others. And that, that second part is important because although you get your, your things done, you don't want to become a threat to someone's else, someone else's position and or what they're trying to get accomplished. Uh, it's improved when managers do these things. They listen to their employees. It's very key that you keep your ears open, uh, your ear to the ground to understand what your employees are saying and see what, what can be fixed because most improvements come from uh, the front line. Help with tasks without complaining, right? Uh, you know, complaining just occurs on a daily basis. They, people complain, they complain, they complain. But what they should be doing is figuring out solutions, working hard, and having a positive attitude. Uh, and maintain a positive attitude right on cue. Uh, you have to keep that positive attitude to keep moving uh, forward through the workplace. I know sometimes it's easier said than done, uh, but it is a, a must. It's a necessity uh, when you're working, especially when you're working with a lot of people. So intrinsic and extrinsic rewards. So intrinsic is how you're motivated internally, if you are, and extrinsic is how you are motivated externally. So intrinsic, if I feel good about my performance, extrinsic, if my boss is going to give me $20 if I perform well. So let's look at the different examples. So extrinsic rewards slash motivators, uh, these are external. Anytime you hear X is X, you know, outside, and in internal is inside. So extrinsic uh, rewards and motivators, economic need is the primary motivator toward work. It's all about the Benjamins, it's all about the money. Uh, it's less powerful. Some of you uh, that are, are really enthused and motivated by the money may not believe this, but it is really uh, less powerful. And I'll, I'll give you an example. So let's just say you get a raise. It takes about one paycheck, maybe two, for that you know, euphoria, euphoria of that raise to kind of wear off because you look at it, it's taxed a lot. Uh, even if it's a bonus, it's taxed about 40%. So, you know, 
the the you being so enthusiastic about that kind of wears off uh, pretty quickly, and then you have to go back to either liking or not liking the job. Uh, rewards includes ability to pay bills, benefits, and financial security, all of which we need. So don't let me uh, say that it's not as powerful as intrinsic to downplay the need because you obviously need uh, your paycheck to pay your bills and everything else, and as do I. Uh, intrinsic rewards and motivators, internal feelings of satisfaction uh, one gets from a job, right? So I feel good about this job and what I've been doing. Uh, they're more powerful, and they include work ethic, sense of self-identity, self-fulfillment and self-worth, uh, social value of work, and social and community roles. <clears throat> So typical intrinsic and extrinsic rewards. So here are some good examples in case you, you know, didn't get the full picture uh, from the previous slide. Uh, intrinsic rewards, increased responsibility, opportunities for personal growth, ability to participate in decision making, variety of job activities, and more job freedom. These are the things that will actually keep you at a company, keep you motivated, keep you doing the things that you need to do. Extrinsic reward examples are performance bonuses, uh, gotta love those though, uh, profit sharing programs, impressive titles, uh, I'm not so big on the title thing, I'd probably rather have the paycheck, uh, pay raises, uh, preferred office furnishings and lunch hours and longer vacations, uh, which is always good. So now we have our, uh, our pyramid of our hierarchy of needs, uh, doesn't have the little title here. Uh, at the top, I don't know if that's missing a diagram, but that's okay. Uh, so uh, you see, and we'll go through, you know, a, a diagram that has what it what it actually says. But just to tell you guys, uh, physiological needs; those are things like uh, food, water, uh, things that you you need to survive, right? If without food or water, you'll you'll die. So those things are the the most important, the base of the pyramid. Safety and security needs: we all need to be uh, safe and secure. You don't want to be robbed or stabbed or shot or anything like that. So you know, we we do need those as well. Belongingness and love, right? We, people need uh, love, need and have love needs and belongingness needs to, to belong to groups or belong to a significant other. Uh, esteem needs, uh, you have those needs to feel good about yourself, good about your job, and good about your life and what you're doing. And self actualization, actualization is uh, like the top. That's like the flow. Like, oh, I'm floating on air, and and I'm, you know, I'm I'm right where I need to be. That's, you know, it's a really small portion of pyramid because it's few times that people get there. Uh, that's kind of like uh, I don't have any, you know, additional improvement. Now you'll, you know, hover around this area a little bit, but you won't just stay in there. Like, you know, I'm done in life and no improvement. I've got everything that I need. So let's check it out. It says Maslow key, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, people satisfy their needs in a certain order. So physiological, most basic satisfa satisfaction of physical needs, including food, water, air, and shelter. Right, you need those things. Uh, safety and security needs. Uh, physical safety from harm and the elements, as well as financial security. Right, you know you need to be secure in uh, uh, your money. Uh, love and belongingness needs, complete acceptance from family and friends, esteem needs, recognition from peers and colleagues, right? You don't want people at work making fun of you and your ideas. You want, you know, good, solid, strong uh, recognition from them. And self is uh, occurs when one has fulfilled his or her potential. So never feel like you've fulfilled your, your potential. Keep striving uh, to do better uh, as I need to as well. <clears throat> so Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs has some assumptions. Uh, unsatisfied needs motivate slash influence a person's behavior. Uh, satisfied needs do not motivate the person's uh, behavior, right? So if they're not satisfied, it's going to motivate you to, to get try and get to that point. Needs are arranged by order of importance, right, as you've, seen, as you've seen in the pyramid. And need in the hierarchy will not be a motivator until those below it are already satisfied. Uh, so it's a guy... Um, I think his name's Eric Thomas. He's a speaker, and I'll, I'll give you the kind of the short version. Uh, if if you look it up, uh, or Eric the Truth Williams or Eric the Truth Thomas, I forget. I'm sure some of you guys have seen it before. And he said, if you want to be successful, go with this guy out to the ocean in the middle of the night. And the guy was like, uh, that's kind of weird, but okay. So he went with them, and the guy took him out, and they walked kind of deep in the water. And the guy was worried, and then the guy grabbed him and pushed him under the water. And, basically was was drowning him and right when he was about to drown he pulled him up and the guy did a big <gasps> gasp for you know for air and he put him back under the water and he's, he's trying to drown him and everything and then you know the guy comes back up and he's like you're trying to kill me but the whole purpose of that was he said now he said what did you need in those few moments and what did you you know ask for and he said you know I, I needed a breath 
right? And what the guy needed was a breath. So that need comes before anything. So it didn't matter if you have a dollar or a trillion dollars at that point in time, you need that, that breath of air because you want to survive no matter how much money you have. So, uh, you know, the point for that was like, well, you know, if you attack your, you know, your work and your motivation and, and, and need it like you need that breath, then you'll, you'll be successful. And it was a good, a good analogy and everything. But, you know, as you know, as you saw in that example, we need certain things before we need money and anything else. All right. So Alderfer's ERG theory. So another theory uh, consists of existence needs, which are physical well-being as a human, relatedness needs, external or socially fulfilling needs, and growth needs, internal esteem needs. So those are internal within you, uh, not extrinsic, but intrinsic. Uh, frustration regression principle, that's one that you'll, you'll definitely need to uh, know that will be on tests and quizzes all over the place. Uh, people who fail to reach a higher need level become frustrated, regress to a lower need level, and stay there for some time, right? So you're on your happy trail, you're, you're moving up, moving up, moving up, and then something happens where you didn't get a promotion, and then you regress and you go back down to where you were before. And some people stay at that regressed uh, uh, area and some people will snap out of it and, and continue to move forward but um, but you have to figure out some type of way uh, to even if you do regress to snap out of it and continue to move forward in life. Uh, McClellan's uh, manifest needs theory all people have needs that motivate them in life and job and that's true uh, power needs so these are very interesting uh, desire by individuals who want to control and influence other people right so if you have power needs and you need to tell people what to do you have power needs. Uh, affiliation needs uh, occur in people who want to be accepted and liked by others, right? So you want people in the office to like you. Uh, you're going to be the social uh, butterfly. Uh, I, power needs, uh, I, I'd say I have some power needs because that comes along with the territory as you move up the ladder. Uh, affiliation needs, uh, not so much. Not that I you know, love being disliked or being that person or whatever. Um, but if it's not there, it's just not there for me. Um, Achievement needs occur in people who are goal oriented and take personal responsibility for achievements. I, I definitely have achievement needs. I need to set certain goals and reach those goals. And needs develop uh, through life experiences, right? Uh, you know, I, I see success in what I've done, so I want to continue to do that. Uh, Herzberg's two factor theory so, hygienes or dissatisfiers, uh, qualities in the workplace that are outside the job itself. Weak or missing motivation falls. When high, motivation is not strong or long-term. So let me give you an example. Management. If management is there, you don't come in the office and say, oh, I love management. But when they're not there, you say, hey, man, this place is so disorganized. Just like the company bathroom. If the company bathroom's there, yeah, you go and use it. You don't say, hey, I'm so glad that we have a bathroom. But if it's not there, then you're going to have a big problem. So motivators or satisfiers are factors that cause real long-term motivation, contain intrinsic motivating or motivation factors. So that's just a, a little uh, diagram. You'll see that uh, as you read through your text, uh, his uh, two-factor theory. Uh, so job enrichment as a motivator. So job enrichment is upgrading of a job that makes it more interesting, meaningful, or rewarding and provides long-term motivation. So get people involved as a manager. Uh, you you want to make their job uh, uh, more enticing, more meaningful, sit down with them and, and see what you can improve and work with them and say, okay, let's work on this project and let's put it into play and, and, and let's run up the ladder and see if they could put it, you know, you know make it a, a new enhancement. And it'll be you. It'll be like your baby and something that you did. And people will be proud of such things. The factors are skill variety, uh, opportunity and ability to use different skills in one's position at work, right? Do you have the skills uh, to, uh, to do something new? And if you don't have the skills, then, then probably not. Uh, task identity, worker's perception of the meaningfulness of a job based upon the worker's permission to start a job and see it through uh, to completion. So uh, if they're not, if they don't think it's really meaningful, then, uh, then they probably won't get too motivated about it, right? If I'm just putting a rubber stamp on these documents, sliding it over, I'm not going to get motivated about that. But if I now sit down and, and think and talk about the process on how we could, you know, rubber stamp four documents at one time, then that's a little bit different, makes my job much more interesting. 
So just a little bit more time, you'll have to go over the other slides, uh, which will be posted yourself. Uh, job enrichment as a motivator, task significance, workers' perception, uh, that the task directly affects other people's works or lives, right? So it's significant because it affects other people. Autonomy is the independence, ability to act and make decisions on one's own without undue interference from management. So you have some type of empowerment, you have some type of freedom, freedom and feedback allows individuals to know how well they are performing. As always, have a good day and a great week.